The West Side wants to be a part of Europe, and the East Side is more culturally connected to Russia. Ukraine's elected government was thrown out earlier this year in a coup after the government refused to sign a free trade deal with Europe. Europe wants Ukraine on its side instead of Russia's because Ukraine has some very important gas pipelines that supply gas to Europe, and it has two ginormous natural gas formations that have been found under Ukrainians' feet, which the multinationals who benefit from free trade agreements would love to get their hands on. The law under the old government was that Ukraine's gas was only allowed to be sold to Ukrainians. The government that was installed quickly signed the trade deal, and now Ukraine's gas is available to be exported to the free market. And by exported to the free market, I mean profited from by the multinational fossil fuel companies that have both of our governments by the balls. Russia, in response to this coup, took over a part of Ukraine. It was a dingleberry peninsula hanging off Ukraine's coast and Russia's coast called Crimea. Russia had a contract with the old democratically elected government for a Russian military base on Crimea. And when that government was thrown out, Russia took the land that houses their military base, and which is full of people who identify as Russian anyway. It really wasn't that unreasonable a thing to do. This area was literally a part of Russia when my grandparents were born. In response, however, the warmongering psychos controlling our government are escalating this beef with Russia over Crimea to ridiculous heights. And make no mistake, we are central to this Ukraine story. The new government was one handpicked and supported by the United States and Europe. We've given the new government a billion dollars, 15 billion more in loan guarantees, 300 military advisors, and over 20 million dollars worth of military equipment. The new Ukrainian government has been using our money and weapons to bomb the shit out of the Russian half of its own country. And we want Russia to stand down. Not that we have any actual proof that Russia is fighting anyway. We appear to be restarting the Cold War, and it's beginning as a trade war. And why? Well, my theory is that it's because it's been a while. It's been over a decade since we've started a big war, and the military-industrial complex needs to sell more weapons. The first Cold War started the space race. Billions and billions and billions of dollars for those companies, and they might as well start it again. So the 2015 NDAA that passed the House orders the Defense Department to make a plan to defend Europe from Russian attacks on NATO countries. And it orders a very detailed report on Russia's military capabilities to be created every year. To punish Russia for taking Crimea, even though we pretty much took the rest of the country, the bill prohibits any NATO country from giving Russia excess military articles and prohibits the militaries of the United States and Russia from cooperating on anything as long as Russia's in Ukraine. Furthering the trade war that began with sanctions in the Ukraine aid bill, the 2015 NDAA is poised to prevent the Defense Department from contracting with Russia's state weapons company. And this may be a problem as the Pentagon has already spent over a billion dollars on 88 Russian helicopters for the Afghan military, a contract that we may have to cancel and the funds shifted to a, quote, American weapons dealer. The most disturbing clause, though, prevents implementation, prevents it, of the New START Treaty, which limits the number of nuclear weapons in both countries until Russia leaves Ukraine. Now, anyone unfortunate enough to have watched American television in the last few months will tell you that Vladimir Putin is made out to be some evil villain by the stations that falsely label themselves as news. And now Russia is finally starting to fight back with their own economic attacks. In response to the sanctions, which we've already placed on Russia while blaming them for everything happening in Ukraine, Russia has banned agricultural products from the United States, Europe, Australia, Canada, and Norway for a year, which will cost these multinationals from those countries billions of dollars in sales. Look what we've done around the world to protect the profits of multinationals. How do you think the corporate psychos in our government are going to react to billions of dollars in losses to those companies? When you look at all of this together, Israel, Colombia, Ukraine, every country in Africa, what you see is that the United States is not just building up our own military, but we're providing the militaries for countries around the world while simultaneously setting the stage for World War III by picking a fight with the only other country strong enough to actually fight us over a piece of land most of us couldn't find on a map. What happens when the same people we're arming and training get angry at us for all of the death and resource stealing and all the other shit that we've pulled? We're already seeing in Ferguson, Missouri, what happens when excess military articles are given to local police. They use them on us. Let's take that to a global level. If the Warhawks get what they're looking for, another profitable world war, we're going to be shot with rockets and guns labeled Made in the USA. We're arming everyone in return for access to resources, especially fossil fuels, 
that lead to profits for multinational corporations. Is that worth risking your life in your country for? If you answer no to that question, I have two suggestions for what we can do about it. Number one, call and email your representative and your two senators right now. This NDAA is not law yet. We still have a few more months. But really, the most important thing we have to do is stop voting for these people. Every two years, we get the chance to throw every single person in the House of Representatives out on their asses. And every two years, we keep giving them their jobs back. We have congressmen who have been in office for 20, 30 years. Stop it. If your candidate talks about how much experience they have, they have experience doing this, militarizing the world every single year for 53 straight years. Nope. Time to throw them out. And then number two, stop buying the multinationals products. If our government is going to do the bidding of the multinationals and use our military to collect and protect their products, it's only natural that the multinationals would take that favor and run with it. I'm not blaming them for this. But the only way they'll stop chasing the fossil fuels under everyone's feet is if we show them that we're not interested in that product anymore. 